Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the Technical Director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. And I'm here with... I'm Barks. I'm a Technical Director focused on Microsoft APIs and our cloud work. And with uh, the comment of APIs, that's the topic of the discussion for today, uh, to talk about what we have um, at Pure Storage available for doing scripting, orchestration, automation, what have you. And, and uh, this video and many other videos where we've done recently um, are VMware focused, right? Um, and so one of the most common options around VMware scripting is VMware's module for PowerShell, PowerCLI. Right? Um, so what are our options at Pure around PowerShell? So let's take one step back and uh, <laughs> The first basis of everything that we do is built on our REST APIs. One of the benefits of our REST APIs is basically it's through HTTPS. So it's highly portable and very, very easy to use compared you know, to other vendors. So everything that we'll discuss here, PowerShell, Python, um, is all built on that REST API. The implementations of both of those, of Python and PowerShell, just happen to be wrappers on top of our REST API. So specifically for PowerShell, um, we have what's called the Pure Storage PowerShell SDK. So that just wraps all of our REST calls so that in the formation of commandlets. And today, the PowerShell SDK is available from the PowerShell gallery. So you know, from an end user standpoint, they just crack open a PowerShell session and they do install dash module Pure Storage PowerShell SDK. Everything gets installed from the cloud and then you're ready to start using it. And so if someone wants to see examples of PowerShell scripts or contribute around that, what are the options for partners and customers? Yeah, so that's one of the other really interesting things that we have is the fact that uh, we have a code community. So you can go visit httpscode.purestorage.com and that'll actually get you to our front-facing uh, GitHub I.O. page. So on that page, you'll notice there's lots of different projects and they all happen to be open source projects. So anyone can fork a repo Anyone can contribute to a repo, and there's tons and tons of examples throughout all the different re, uh, repositories that are off of our GitHub page. So the way to get started with that is basically using, uh, accessing the code.purestorage.com site, you'll see that there's uh, a, a guide there that gets, uh, explains to you how you can do contributions. So we have some you know, very particular things that we want people to follow during for uh, contributing code. And you know, I manage the entire site, so a lot of those things come to me, and you know, I, I either do uh, accept pull requests if somebody's done a fork and they've done some new uh, additions to, you know, whatever it could be, a, a Python module, a PowerShell module, and then that'll become available for other people to use. So what do you see are the most commonly used scripting tools that we offer that customers using? Is it PowerShell, is it Python, is it, is that, has it been changing recently? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So I think everyone's familiar with the fact that the flash array phones home. So anytime the flash array is phoning home, we actually get statistics from all that phone home data. So as part of, you know, we have so many different ways that the REST API is being used because always understand that's our foundation. So when you look at the landscape of items, you know, we have vSphere plugin, uh, we have our Python toolkit, we have our PowerShell stuff, um, there's some uh, SRM pieces that are all leveraging um, either our REST API or in some cases uh, a C-sharp DLL that actually wraps our REST APIs as well. So when you look at those across the, you know, the statistics, um, PowerShell is our most used uh, way of accessing the flash array itself. Um, we see, you know, for a, a given week, we could see between two and four million sessions come through um, that are actually performing some type of operation, whether it's uh, the equivalent of new PFA volume, which is equivalent to uh, pure vol. Um, these all things kind of surface up, and, and that's, you know, PowerShell is probably the most popular one today. So, you know, uh, one of the great things about our REST API is that it's built in directly to the array, right? So you don't have to build a management appliance or something in the middle to, to use it. So that really simplifies getting up and running with the scripting. But sometimes when people hear REST API, they get a little scared. Oh, API, REST, what's this? Um, do you need to have a solid understanding of REST to use something like our PowerShell SDK? Oh, not at all. If you, if you can do basic commandlet works that would be, whether it be PowerCLI or whether it be something within Windows Server, um, you basically can start doing anything with our SDK. Um, the only things you really need is um, flash array, uh, either FQDN or an IP address, and then a username password. 
and essentially you create a session and now you can start running any one of the commandlets. And the interesting thing about our commandlets is for those that you know, maybe not familiar with PowerShell um, deeply is PowerShell is, is almost self-documenting. So every one of our commandlets um, using kind of going back and using that new PFA volume. So if you said get dash help with that name of the commandlet, you'll actually get all the examples, all the details, all the inline documentation directly in that Windows PowerShell session. So you have the chance of, of learning through that as well, um, as well as going to the, to the code site and being able to kind of see examples of, of, of different things. So let's say I'm, a, I'm new to coding, scripting, or whatever. What's, what's a good way for me to get started with the Flash Array? What would you recommend for me to start doing to kind of get into it? Uh, first thing I would recommend is you start using Visual Studio Code. <laughs> That's an extremely important thing. Um, adding that PowerShell support into VS Code um, really kind of lights up the environment and gives you context-sensitive information, uh, color coding of the different commandlets and parameters and things of that nature. So that's kind of the first thing, is, is getting a really good editor that you can use very well, right? Um, the next thing is, realistically, it's just start reading my blog, reading your blog, um, where we have just tons and tons of examples. Um, when I first started at Pure, I developed the first version of our PowerShell called the PowerShell Toolkit, which is now morphed into the SDK. So there's almost five years worth of blogs um, that talk specifically about our PowerShell integration. Um, so that's one way of getting started. And then you know, going up and looking at any of the repositories that have a PowerShell module or a PS1 file, crack those open and, and actually kind of see what's going on. Um, and for historical purposes, the original PowerShell toolkit that I wrote is still available on GitHub as well. So you can see how the SDK is really functioning because I wrapped in PowerShell all of our REST APIs. So you can see what it's like to call a REST API directly from PowerShell, and then it'll also kind of give you the information and background on really what's happening under the covers from the SDK standpoint. And sometimes what I've seen people when they start too is that, uh, you know, often how people manage it initially is they'll use the GUI or they'll SSH in and run CLI commands. I said, stop SSHing in and running CLI commands, just run some PowerShell commands, because it's very similar to just a regular old CLI if you want to. It doesn't have to be compiled and run in a file. You can just run it, and it'll return something, and then you take that and do something else, right? Yeah. And so, so stop using SSH, just, you know, run a few PowerShell commands to kind of get comfortable with what it does, and then you can start adding things like logic and loops and so forth exactly. into it, right? So it's a good way to get started. So let's say I, I wrote a script um, that does something cool, I don't know, you know, uh, recovery from replication or something like that. What do I do now to contribute that to the rest of the community? What's the best way to, to deliver that? So I think the first place to start, um, especially as you're kind of learning um, and you're creating things, is join our Slack team. So we have a Slack team uh, at code-purestorage.slack.com. So uh, there's also an invitation. So our, our Slack team for um, our coding work, so that Slack team covers C Sharp, PowerCLI, PowerShell, REST, Python. I mean, it covers pretty much every different type of scripting integration that we have. Um, so that's one, one place to get started. And I, honestly, I would say for people that want to contribute, put your stuff in there. And then we monitor that. So Cody, myself, a couple other engineers, we participate, answer people's questions, and help them out. And then that way we can kind of look at it and give them some guidance. Say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? And then honestly, once the, you know, once the contributor wants to get that into the community, then they could start working with me um, to actually get either a new repo created or getting them permissions to add content to one of the existing repos. Yep, yep. and create a GitHub page, right? If you don't have one right exactly. now, definitely do yeah. that, right? Yeah, because one of the cool things that you can do with regards to our GitHub work is any one of the repos that we have out there, you can go to them, once you create your GitHub account, you can fork off into your own repo, right? So it's your own, you own that. And until you want to contribute back to the repo that you cloned from, um, any work that you do is yours. Right? You're not mucking around with something that's live out there and people are using. So you have the chance to kind of pull it down, use it, learn from it, and then you know, once you have the contribution ready, reach out on the code uh, Slack team, and then we can kind of work on getting that uh, pushed up. Great. So any final advice for uh, burgeoning coders or scripters using the Pure Flash Array? Don't be scared. 
Um, a lot of our commandlets um, are really read-only commandlets, um, and you can't break the array. Um, so that's the big thing is, you know, start investigating, testing things out, and if you have any problems, hit us up on the Slack team. Yep, absolutely. Well, thanks, Barks, appreciate it. Um, all those links that he mentioned will be available with the video, um, so check those out. And of course, code.purestorage.com is a great place to start too. Thanks a lot. Cool, thanks.